Resurrection Day. May we please stand for the reading of the word. Guys, look a little further away from this season. Good morning again. Our reading will come from Matthew, the 28th chapter, verses 16 through 20. And it reads, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And verse 20 says, Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the earth. Amen. I read to you Matthew 28, chapter, verses 16 through 20. May God add a blessing to the readers, listeners, and doers of his most holy word. May we please bow our heads. Holy Father, we came to you today. We came to you with our head bowed down to Mother Earth. I'm asking you to create in me a clean heart and renew in me the right spirit so that I might be worthy to intercede for these corporate prayer for these and your people. We're asking all of those that's here to worship the God that made you and reverence him. So I'm asking you to bless all of the ministers of this church. Not just the ministries, but the ministry leaders. Bless the ministry leaders, bless the pastor. Bless the pastor in a way that he would lead your people, in a way that you would want them to go. Bless the mothers and the fathers and, and the children of this church. Bless this community, bless this nation as a whole, so that they might be the people that you would want to say that one day that they might be able to join you in the heavens above. We're asking you to bless the people that's protecting this nation, bless the military, bless those that are incarcerated, change their minds so that they might be led on a different path. And we're asking you to bless those that seek and shed it so that they might have a renewed spirit so that they might want to go on to see what the end is going to be like. And we're asking you to do all these things in your son Jesus' name.
each year for a total of $75. All funds will go into our all-in building fund in support of the completion of our second pool classrooms. Mother's Board dinner Sunday, April 28, following the 10 a.m. service. Kingdom Village Sports Recreation Ministry, Old School versus New School Volleyball Game, Sunday, April 28, and many following the 10 a.m. service. Had to Sister Carter or Sister Blue for additional information. The Reverend Myron Taylor Academic Exit Scholarship, Model Cross Sports and Recreation Scholarship application process is now open and will run through May 1st. There will be an informational brief meeting on Tuesday, April 9th from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. at the Bell. You may pick up a copy of the flyer at the Greetings Desk. We bet the school practice is taken Tuesday every month, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. The ministry still asks for donations. See the list located at the Greetings Desk. Attention based release before planning an event. Check with office staff to make sure there are no conflicts with the event that you are planning. Please provide announcements to the work by Tuesday of every week. Notify the media and music ministry for media and musical support. New members needed. Asian Cry Team, Praise and Worship Team, Ages 3 and Up Contest Sister Nikki Johnson, Ashley Schiff. Heavenly Mission Contest Sister Kanisha Smith. Usher Mission Contest Brother Charles Brown. Father Tuesday, near my Miss Pretty, contact Deacon James Augustus. Children in the new Christian contact Deacon Tyrone Smith. To report any members who are sick or at the hospital or any death, you may contact the office staff or make sure you get a prayer request card from an usher. Prayer line available every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday at 6 a.m. Those who get including your prayers are members, relatives, and friends. Those that are in our service men and women, our leaders, and our churches in our country. For God's true body, see for the Spirit. There is a world of difference between knowing the Word of God and knowing the God of the Word. Philippians 3 and 10 says, I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of His resurrection and participation in His suffering. Becoming like Him is in His death. Happy Resurrection Day. Y'all have a good day. This video is an introduction to My Scholarship Central. My Scholarship Central is a free scholarship search and application site specifically for students from Missouri and the Metro East counties in Illinois. We are easy to use and make the scholarship application process simple for students. To begin, visit myscholarshipcentral.org slash apply and then click the blue apply now button. That will take you to our application site. Once you're at our application site, you'll want to click the white sign up button in the upper right hand corner. That will take you to the next sign up page where you will click the orange continue with Blackbaud ID button. Once you click that button, you will be prompted to create your account. When you first create your account, you'll want to click sign up at the bottom of that sign in page. That will take you to the sign up page. Enter your email address. Use an email address that's not your high school email address so you'll have access beyond graduation. And then enter a password. Please note that the password requirements are very specific and you do have to meet those for your account to be approved. Once you have filled out the whole sign up page and click sign up, you'll get an email and then you confirm your account and then you can start the application process. The first step of our application process is to complete the general application. The general application is like your profile. This is where we'll ask you all your basic questions that are seen by all the scholarship programs and will be used to match you to scholarships. Make sure you enter all your information correctly and you do need to upload your transcript. So having a PDF copy of your transcript is very helpful for the general application. Once your general application is complete, you will apply to specific scholarships. You are not eligible for any scholarship funding until you have applied for recommended scholarships. So check your recommended opportunities list. These are scholarships where you have met the basic requirements. This is where you will find the new Bethel Missionary Baptist Church application. You click that orange apply button to start completing the questions. Students who are successful on My Scholarship Central usually follow these tips. They complete applications fully, correctly, and submit them on time. They submit high quality work, especially the essay. They don't apply to scholarships they do not qualify for. You don't have a chance of earning a scholarship that you don't meet the requirements for, so don't waste your time applying for it. Students who check their email also do well. Sometimes scholarship providers need clarification or additional information, 
or they want to reach out to award a student a scholarship. So make sure you're checking your email. Over 140 scholarships are open and accepting applications right now. Deadlines vary. Most are in March and April. Some scholarships are open through May and June, but we have very few opportunities beyond that. So now is the time to apply. The scholarship providers who partnered with my Scholarship Central are aware of the FAFSA delays that are currently happening. They have adjusted timelines and requirements and are ready to make changes as needed. If you have already submitted your FAFSA, you should receive your FAFSA submission summary soon. Financial aid offer letters will start arriving from colleges and universities in late April. And if you don't have the documents needed for a scholarship, reach out to the contact person listed on the scholarship information. And if you have not started your FAFSA, now is the time to complete it so that you're eligible for the most financial aid possible. The benefits of using My Scholarship Central is that the general application saves you time. You're not having to type your name and address in high school over and over and over again and it automatically matches you to scholarships that are a good fit for you. Everything's all in one place and all digital, all your applications, documents, and letters of recommendation. You will receive application deadline reminder emails for scholarships that you start but have not submitted, and then there's just a lot of scholarship money waiting to be applied for. Last year, more than 4,000 students earned $15 million in scholarships and interest-free student loans. So start your application today, myscholarshipcentral.org slash apply, and with any questions, email support at myscholarshipcentral.org. Thank you for partnering with My Scholarship Central, and good luck with your applications. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. This time we're going to uh, go into communion. Uh, I believe if you don't have a communion, uh, their uh, ushers will issue one. This time, matter of fact, I don't even have one. Come on! 
worship the Lord. Oh, I love you. I love you. Oh, I love you. I love you. Oh, I love you. Oh, I need you to lift your hands and worship me. Come on, tell me. I love you, Jesus. Forever. I love you. Forever. That's it. That's it. We love you, Jesus. Come on. Let's lift our hands and give you worship. He deserves it. You can move a little bit. Come on. Oh. Come on, say. I need you forever. I need you. I need you. Yes. I need you. We need you every day, every hour. You're such a good soul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. I need you. Come on. Yes, Lord. No music, just the voices. Come on. I love you. You may want to be quiet. I love you forever. Come on, tell them how much you love me. I need all of you. I love you, I love you. 
Does anybody still love him? Like the first day you met him. It gets sweeter as the day goes by. Come on, talk. There's a preaching anointing in the atmosphere. All I need is one amen. I'll preach how I feel it. Look at somebody and say, I love him. I love him. I love him. I love him. Yes, yes, yes. Get your Bibles. Get your Bibles. It ain't going to take long. It ain't gonna take long. Go to, let's go to John 12. We started here a couple of Sundays ago, and we're gonna end right here. Listen, I promise you, for some of you, it's not for everybody, but some of y'all are gonna dance this Sunday. I can guarantee you that. Not because of what I say. It's been because of what he's already said to you. But just lean on your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got a dance in my feet today. I said, lean over to your neighbor. going to prophesy today. In every place that your feet shall tread, God is getting ready to give you some new territory. God is getting ready to give you some new opportunities. Somebody just tap your feet and say they're about to prophesy for me. There's a word in my feet. John chapter 12. I may need the other mic, Brother Amos, I think somebody, may, Sister, Sister Gibson, I may need the other mic. I got first lady's mic. Amen. I may need that other one here in a second. John chapter 12. Let's look at verse number uh, 28. Last week, we cried, Hosanna, blessed be the right Blessed be the God of my salvation. Draw all men 
unto me. I don't know if the title is up there, but can you show them the title? Just look at somebody and say, neighbor, neighbor. it's all a part of his plan. Come on, tell somebody else, say, neighbor, it's been all a part of his plan. This whole time. Give the Lord praise. been a busy week for our Lord. Saturday he was in Bethany. Last Saturday he was in Bethany. He met with Lazarus and his sisters. Bible records in the same pericope that he has ate dinner. Many have come by to see Jesus and to see the miracle of Lazarus. Bible records that they didn't come for Jesus' sake only. DeAndre, they came to see the man that had been raised from the dead. If you remember that I submitted to you last week that Bethany is not too far from Jerusalem. Jesus and God and his providential power has set it up that Jesus would be in Bethany around the time of the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. It is not by coincidence that this holy time has now collided with the miracle of Lazarus being raised from the dead. Here's how I know there's a crowd that's going to welcome him. There was a crowd at Mary and Martha's house. There was a crowd at the grave. And as Minister Charles so eloquently put this morning at sunrise service, they have come to mourn his death. But God had a divine plot twist. God changed it up on them. He raised Lazarus from the dead. God has allowed this to happen. And watch this, our Lord has ended up in Jerusalem on Sunday. Last Sunday, they took branches off the palm trees. They declared to him, Hosanna, blessed is the king and the man that comes in the name of the Lord. What a great last week it was. But our Lord has had a busy week. On Monday, the Bible lets us know that on Monday, he finds himself in the temple. He's cleaning the temple. He's cleaning the church because the money changers have come in because they know that during the holy time of Passover and Feast of Unleavened Bread that people from all over the nation, all over the world have come and they have descended on Jerusalem and they're coming, watch this people of God, and they're coming to pay their respect and the money changers are taking advantage of the people that have come from far and near. They're charging them exuberant prices for pigeons. They're charging them great charges for now to have lambs to sacrifice. And Jesus comes to the temple on the Monday and he doesn't look for a crowd. He doesn't look for the palm trees because he knows that's only temporary. But the Bible lets you know that he comes into the temple and he begins to take a whip and turns over the money changers. He says that you have turned my father's house into a den of thieves but his house shall be called a house of prayer. And I submit to you, New Bethel, this morning that you better stop making his house about your house, but this house belongs to God. It is not a den of thieves, but it is a house of prayer. Look at your neighbor say to them, if you need prayer, you're in the right place. Some of y'all ain't moved yet to wake up and tell your neighbor again and say, if you need prayer, you're in the right place. Now just imagine Jesus coming into the temple and he's turning over these tables and here's what the people may say to him, Deacon Jackson. They said, well, last week, last, last yesterday, we gave you branches. We gave you this big adoration. Why in the world are you preaching against our sin knowing that we have the power to crucify you? But I love what Jesus says. Jesus tells them the same thing. He going to tell Pilate on Thursday and Friday. He going to say, you have no power. Because I don't, you don't take my life, but I lay it down. Can I tell you right now that the devil thinks that he's taking advantage of you? But I need to remind you so you can remind the devil you ain't doing nothing that God ain't allowed. You are not affecting me unless God signed up on it. And if God signed up on it, then he knows that I can handle it. Because 
are not good unless we have our coffee. Can you imagine that Jesus finds himself on the Monday morning and he's turning over, oh, he's turning over all of the money changers. Why? Because they made God's house something that it was never meant to be. Well, look at now Tuesday and Wednesday. He deals with the religious leaders. Tuesday, they have heard him preach. They saw what the people did on Sunday. And on Tuesday of the Passion Week, they find themselves still questioning who he is. If you read chapter 12, verse 19, you find something that is hidden in the text. The Bible says that one of the Pharisees says, you guys are wasting your time for the whole world has went after him. Go, go read it again in chapter 12, verse 19. There was somebody that was in the audience that saw the people being delivered, that saw the people being set free. And he said, all the plans that you are devising to kill this man, they are for naught because the world has gone. Is it in the Bible? Is it right there? It's right there in the text. If we go back and read it, all of the world has went after them. Let me pause parenthetically to let you know that he wasn't just talking about the black Hebrews. He wasn't just talking about the white man. He wasn't talking about the Asian only. But the Bible says that all of the world has went after them. That's the folk in Washington Park. That's the folk in East St. Louis. That's the folk uptown. That's the folk downtown. That's the folks in Shiloh, all of the world. Look at somebody and say, all the world, Craig. That's all the world. All the world has went after him. All of the world wants to believe in him. Why? Because he came that he might die. And on Tuesday, they're still trying to find out who he is. Isn't it a sad thing that after all the things that God has done, we still got the nerve to question him. But look at somebody and say, neighbor, I'm in the season of my life where I'm tired of questioning God. I just know that he's up to something and that it's a part of his plan. I don't know how he's going to do it. I don't know when he's going to do it. But one thing I know, y'all hear that preacher, that he is going to make a way. Give your neighbor that high five and say, neighbor, he's going to make a way. Still questioning him by Wednesday, they have gotten to Judas and they made a plan with Judas. They said, Judas, we need you to set him up, we need you to get him to a place where we can come and arrest him. They're trying to arrest him because they believe that what he has done has flipped the world upside down. Can I tell you for the last 33 years of his life, Jesus has now begun to flip two constructs in the world. He has flipped the religious construct and he has flipped the social construct. He has flipped the religious construct because the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees were the people that everybody looked up to. But when Jesus came, he said, take your eyes off of them and put them on me. But just like religious folk then, it's like religious folks now. When you take the spotlight off of them and put it on God, they get an attitude. Y'all still quiet. Let me preach out my feeling. They get mad when the spotlight is not on them. Have you ever met somebody who lied to you and talk about, I like to be in the background, but the moment you don't call their name, they get an attitude. See, Jesus came to flip the construct because all the glory was going to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. But there's only one man that gets the glory. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 29, there's only one that gets the glory. That is God. And so Jesus came to flip the religious construct, but he also came to flip the social construct because the poor and the widow were not being taken care of. But Jesus says, you got to take care of all of my children because I came to seek and to save that which is lost. I just came to announce to somebody on Easter Sunday that it's all a part of his plan. When you just look at three people on your wall and say, neighbor, whatever it is, it's all a part of his 
church plan. Oh, some of your neighbors still ain't moved. They got an attitude. Turn me up, some Sister Gibson. They can't hear me in Cahokia Heights. Here it is. It's all part of his plan. Oh, on Thursday, Jesus has, Jesus has begun to prepare his disciples to let them know my time is at hand. And the Bible, the Bible, the Bible lets you know that he tells them to go into the town and find me a coat that I can ride that has never been ridden because God wants the first fruits of your life. God doesn't want the leftovers. And can I pause parenthetically to let you know some of you got to stop coming to church giving God your leftovers. You don't get your job the best part of you. You don't get your booth the best part of you. You done gave your children the best part of you, and you got the nerve to walk in the church talk about I'm tired, boss. But I need some of y'all to wake up and get excited about what God is doing. See, some of y'all still look like a bump on the log, but lean on your neighbor and say, neighbor, I just I'm excited about what God is doing in my life. He's taking me from sick to well. He's taking me from broke to prosperous.
was. He said, you meant it for my evil, but God is going to use it to save Israel. Lean on your neighbor again and say, neighbor, it's all part of his plan. Thursday night comes and he has to leave and he tells his disciples that after the eating is done on Thursday night, he don't do what some of y'all going to do in a couple hours after you get this good preaching, after you dance, after you sing, some of y'all going to go eat real good, ain't that right? And then some of y'all can't wait for your Sunday afternoon nap. I see it on you right now. Some of y'all been here since sunrise service. You can't wait till I get done preaching so you can call on the name of the Lord. You can call him while you're sleeping and let your eyelids do the talk. I know, I know. But Jesus does something different. After dinner, he says, let's go to the Garden of Gethsemane where we can pray. Now, that's a novel idea because some of y'all yawn and laugh. Because after you eat, eat dinner, after you eat dinner, you don't want to pray. You want to sleep. Jesus says that there's going to be time to sleep, but right now you got to pray with me. He sets his disciples in one place. He takes Peter, James, and John to another place. But the Bible records that he went a little further, and he went into a place, and he became sorrowful because he knew what was getting ready to now happen a couple of hours from now. He goes back to Peter, James, and John. He says, you cannot watch with me but for one hour. And he wakes them back up. And how many times has God put you on watch? But he comes back and finds you sleeping. He finds you walking and gossip. He finds you doing other things. But wake your neighbor up and say, neighbor, ain't you supposed to be praying? Ain't you supposed to be watching? And here you are asleep. He comes back another time, finds them again, and he goes back to pray. And then he says, nevertheless, God, not my will, but your will be done. He comes back to them again. He says, sleep on, for my hour is here. And the Bible says on Thursday night, they come and arrest my Savior. They come and arrest an innocent man. And Thursday night in the Friday morning, they have a rush trial. They take an innocent man and march him from judgment hall to judgment hall. They tell lies on him. They tell how he blasphemed the kingdom. They lied and said that he would not only tear the kingdom down, but that he would raise it up. And they said he couldn't do it. And the Bible also lets you know that they pulled the hair out of his beard. They slapped him and mocked him and said prophesy and tell us who did it. Can I also tell you, because some of y'all like to fight, I'm praying for y'all. They spit on my Savior. They spit on him because they did not recognize what he had done. Somebody say it's been a long week for him. He went up on the mountaintop with Hosea, but now he's in the valley and I can see Jesus in the valley remembering what David wrote in Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want He maketh me. Can I tell you something? And when you're going through rough places in your life, you need to record what God's word said to you. Look at somebody and say, do you remember what he said? Do you remember that he said he'll never leave you nor forsake you? That God will always be with you. Thursday night to Friday morning, they've been rushing my Savior. And they think they're rushing him to death. But can I tell you that while they're trying to rush you, they're setting up God's plan. You see, they're trying to devise a plan that you don't think you're going to be able to get out of. But I need you to prophesy to yourself and say, we're going to make it out of this. Yeah, yeah I know. And can I tell you that when you prophesy, your words will come to pass? What do you mean they'll come to pass? Well, go back to the text in John chapter 12. The Bible says that Jesus told them that I got to glorify thy name. 
heaven. But in verse number 29, there was a voice that came from heaven. And the Bible says that everybody heard the same voice. Can I tell you that this is only one in three times that God has spoke from heaven concerning Jesus. He spoke one time at his baptism. Y'all, y'all do remember that, don't you? You do remember when he spoke and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. That's the first time Jesus talked. The second time we hear God talk. The second time we hear God talk is in Matthew 17 on the Mount of Transfiguration. You do remember he began to prophesy and talk to Jesus, talk about Jesus, and Peter, James, and John heard him. But now this third time, he says, not only are the believers going to hear you, but the unbelievers are going to hear me too. And God says that I'm not only going to glorify my name, but I'm going to glorify it again. Can I tell you that every time you go through a situation, God is trying to get some glory out of it. He suffered. Yeah. That he 
suffered for you, when they pulled out his hair, when they spit on him, when he was ridiculed, when he was mocked, I want you to remember his suffering. I want you to remember how they said that he could do what he said he could do. I somebody say, remember how he suffered. Oh, but I also want you to respect his sacrifice. Don't treat Easter just like any other day. That the Easter is a day that we remember not only what he did, but what he's going to do. What did he do? Yes, he died. Yes, he got up, but this is why I'm excited, because he's on his way back. And he's going to present himself a church without spot or wrinkle or any sin. I need the church to get excited because Jesus is on his way back. Can anybody say time is winding up? Can I just say like the old church, this train don't carry no cameras, this train. This train is going in Jesus. Somebody say he's on his way back. Oh, but I want you to respect his sacrifice. Jesus answered and said unto them in verse 30, this voice came not because of me. I didn't need to hear his voice because I already know his voice. Look at verse number 30. He said, it came for your sakes. It came so that you would know that in the dark places of your life, you don't have to worry because God is going to come through. You don't, you don't have to be phased by what's going on. You don't have to be religious, but all you can do is just rest in his care. You can sit down and say, it looks bad now, but I know it's working together for my good. Is there anybody in the church that knows it's all working together for your good. But then why don't you look at somebody and say it's all working together for your good. Y'all are helping me preach it. Look at somebody and say it's all working together for my good. I said help me preach and say it's all working together for my good. Yes it is. Because I know what the plans have been devised for me. And I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know that Satan is trying to bring me down. All I know that the Lord has a plan for you and I. Have I got a witness in the church today? I'm not ready to go yet, but I feel a little preaching today that, that this voice that came from heaven wasn't for God, but it was for your sakes. I'm not preaching this way because God needs to hear it, but you need to hear it. I'm not preaching this way because uh, the angels are going to cry my name, but I'm preaching this way because we need to hear it. But look at somebody and say, I need the word. I need to know what it says when I'm going through. I need to be reminded of his promises while I'm going through. I'm not ready yet, but I need to be reminded of the promises of God. Why don't you help me preach and say, I I told you I felt preaching it, but say, I need, I need his word. I need it on a Monday. I need it on a Tuesday. Yes, I need it on a Wednesday and a Thursday. Aren't you glad for good Fridays in your life? That it was a good Friday, although he was going down. It was a good Friday, even though they were lying on him. It was a good Friday, even though they put a crown of thorns on his head. Why was it good? Because it was working together for the plan of God. Why was it good? Because God's plan was strongly coming together. It was a good Friday that evening. And we they marched him up, God called for seal. It was still a good Friday. It was a good Friday because he died. Yes, he did. It was a good Friday when the thief on the cross said, if you really be the son of God, won't you save us and save yourself? Somebody say it was a good Friday. It was a good Friday when all disciples left him hanging. Somebody say it was a good Friday. It was a good Friday when Peter cut that man's ear off and Jesus performed the first surgery and now put it on the ear back on. It was a good Friday.
try him. Because everything that tried to happen for my bad, God is turning for my good. Is there anybody in the church that gets happy over Good Friday? Well, the Bible says that now that the judgment of the world is here and the prince of this world will be cast out. Jesus was talking about Satan because Satan had been operating in the earth for far too long. And Jesus knew that now was the time he was going to deal with Satan. Can I help somebody up and go old school with you? That Jesus may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. You might have thought that God should have dealt with that situation last week, but he's waiting till this week to handle that situation. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, with patience, possess your soul. Because you don't know what God is up to. But I know that God is up to something. Why don't you help me preach and say, I know the Lord is up to something. Y'all got the wrong neighbor. Put your hand behind your ear and say, neighbor. I know the Lord is up to something. Now I was watching YouTube one day. And there was this old mother on YouTube. And she said, I'm not this year. She said, 20. When the preacher tell me to look at my neighbor, I'm not going to do it. Because I'm tired of all the antics and the foolishness. Well, if I can write that mother in all of my sincerity, and if I can be very respectful, I can say, Mother, I appreciate your sin, and I respect your opinion. But when the preacher tell you to do something, you better might as well do it. Turn to your neighbor and say, Neighbor, I what you came in here with but where two or three are gathered together in his name that's why I'm turning to you that's why I'm touching you that's why I'm shaking your hand because when we agree God comes in the midst yes yes he does and the Bible says that now that the son of this the prince of this world he's not only going to be destroyed but he's going to be cast out. Can I be prophetic for a moment? That in Ezekiel 28, the Bible says that when Lucifer began to act crazy in heaven, the Bible says that now God casted him out of heaven. So not only is he cast out of heaven, but he's about to be cast out of the world. Y'all missed your place to shout. See, he was cast from heaven in order to now, now, now be, be on earth. But Jesus said, not only am I the God of heaven, but I'm the God of the earth. Put some Bible on it. Let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And if the saint can't be in heaven, he sure enough can't be on earth. Y'all wish no place to shout out. It said he shall be cast out of this place. And I want to let you know that after you remember his suffering, after you respect his sacrifice, write this last thing down. I want you to receive your Savior. Can I preach how I feel it? The Bible says that Jesus says that now I've gotten the two places in order that Satan is going to be cast out of the earth. But this is what I need you to do. He says, and I, comma, you cannot miss the comma in the sentence because the comma is a pause. Because the first part of 32 goes with the end part of 31. He says, and now Satan will be cast out. And I, in other words, you know where Satan is going, but let me tell you what to do with me. He says, and if I be lifted from the earth I will draw all men unto me see he didn't die to cast out Satan he can do that with his words but he said I'll deal with Satan you deal with me y'all missed y'all place to shout it some of y'all so focused on Satan that you missing dealing with Jesus Jesus said receive your Savior he said Come on, 
Lord tell them you look real good. Ask them how much money they spent on the outfit. You look real good. And you smell real good. And you came to worship God on this resurrection Sunday. But I didn't come to see what you had on. I didn't come to see who was coming. I didn't even come to hear nothing else but the preaching of the word. But I want to remind you that it's all now this is where some of y'all need to go ahead and walk out because you don't want to hear this part but I want to tell somebody he died one Friday night yes he did because he said if I be lifted up from the earth so Jesus said I've already dealt with Satan and so now I need you to deal with me so what did he do he gave his hand so that your mind could be renewed. He gave his hands to the nails that you could be healed by them. He gave his nail and feet to the nails so that when you walk, you can walk with purpose. He gave his side to the spear so that you can come in and out of him with boldness. All I want to let you know, he gave himself so that you can be redeemed and I feel a little preaching now. Push me a little bit because he died until the sun refused to shine. He died and it caused an earthquake and the earth began to shake like a drunken man. He died until the head was now now in the locks of his shoulder. He stayed there from the ninth of the 12th hour. He died. Somebody say yes he did. But he died. But it was all a part of his plan. He died. For the centurion said surely this must be the son of God. I was trying to see if y'all was going to preach with me. He died. Until the in the temple but now the curtain was written to he died oh yes he did until his mother looked up and he said to John behold your mother he died for you and I I gotta get out of here cause you didn't come to hear about how he died but he died because dying stay right there mom don't push me that fast because I'm ready to have some church, but they want to get this. But he died, and dying is a part of the resurrection because you can't rise until he dies. Can I help some of y'all out? Some of y'all trying to push me because you want me to say who got up, but I can't tell you he got up until I tell you what he went through. You can't appreciate my testimony until you understand all of the hell that I've been through to get right here. Let's have testimony service. Look at your neighbor and say, first give an honor to God, who is the head of my life. I thank the Lord for being here, for finding me saved. Y'all are helping me testify. Saved and sanctified. Of the Holy Ghost. Let me go Pentecostal. And I speak in tongues as a spirit given utterance. Let me get back Baptist. And this is what I want you to understand that all the hell that you've been through was for this very moment. And I announce again, he died. Can I say it like I say it? Didn't he die? He has and he stayed there Friday night and they thought it was over and it was a silent Saturday he was in the grave on the Sabbath day and he wasn't going to do no work let's go to church Mike he was stay there Saturday night but I'm so glad hey, I'm so glad that he it was all a part of his plan. I don't know who needs to hear this, but you've been going through, but it's been all, yes, all a part of his plan. Go to the three people and say, hey, neighbor, 
Romans are coming. Hallelujah. If you need to make this your church home today, you can do so today. So that's three invitations. There's one of salvation, rededication. Can we give God praise for rededication? He said, don't allow shit to, to guilt trip you. You can come, my brother. You can come, my sister, today. And you can be free. Hallelujah. Can we give God praise? God is moving in the midst of us. Glory to the name of the Lord. So that's salvation, that's rededication, that's church membership. Hallelujah. Or maybe you even need prayer on this resurrection morning. If you need somebody to pray with you, to pray you through. You're going through something. You're a private person. We get it. The Bible says we're two or three. We're touching the grief that God would be in the midst. And so if you need prayer today, you prayer is available to you as well. That's salvation. Hallelujah, the souls are coming. Can we get excited that God is moving in our midst? Hallelujah, glory. Come on, there's somebody else out there. You need salvation. You need to rededicate. Church membership, can we give God praise for church membership? Church membership, amen. To church, hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. God is moving in the midst of us. Glory to God. And there, would there be any others? Hallelujah. Church salvation, rededication. Hallelujah. God is moving. God is moving. I don't know if you understand. The Spirit of the Lord is in this place. And He's moving on the hearts and minds of His people. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on. Salvation. Rededication. Church membership, can we give God praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Will there be any more? Glory to God. I'm going to wait for you this morning, my brother, my sister. Hallelujah. We, God is moving. God is moving. Glory, glory. Don't you leave the same way you came, my brother or my sister. In the name of baptism, can we give God praise? in the midst of us. Hallelujah. Salvation. Dedication. Church membership. Hallelujah. Don't you leave the same way you came. Don't you leave in guilt and shame and then worry. God is in the midst of us. He's moving now. In Jesus' name, glory. Will there be any more? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And if that's you with butterflies in your stomach, then God is talking to you. Hallelujah. Come on, we got more souls coming. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's moving. He's moving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Church membership. Can we put God? Church membership, can we give God praise? Are you moving in the midst of his
least more now. faith not fail us, Lord, but we thank you that we have hope in you, and we trust you, Lord. We trust you. We trust you, Lord. We trust you with these souls. We trust you with our heart. We trust you with our lives. Oh, God, you're worthy. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy. You're worthy, Lord. Glory to your name. Now, Father, protect those souls. We cover them under your blood. We cover them under your blood, Lord, even now. We thank you that the blood still works and has never lost its power. Hallelujah. And that's the reason that we are gathered here today because of your blood. And because you have risen. And you didn't stay there, but you left us a comforter. You left us a great comforter. Hallelujah. To empower us. So we pray that you would fill us even the more with your Holy Spirit even now. In Jesus' name I pray. Let every heart say amen. Lord, hallelujah, as we continue to move higher and further in this place of worship, we enter into this sacred hour to sow seeds today. Let me remind you of the ways that you can give. If you're on campus, you already know that you can give. As the deacons are coming, you can walk up and give. Amen. And if you are watching online, you can give. By way of mailing in here at the church at 5803 Belmont. Or you can also do it uh, on our church website at www.newbethelmbchurch.com. Or you can give one of my favorite ways to give, uh, which is through Cash App. Dollar sign New Bethel MB Church. You want to make sure you see the right logo so that you can sow to the right ground. Hallelujah. And as you are preparing your seeds, let us pray over those seeds. Put it in that right hand, that seed. That, that right hand represents power and authority. And so, Father, we thank you that you said as long as the earth shall remain, there shall be seed time and harvest. And so, Father, we thank you that as we sow cheerfully, we are in covenant with you. We thank you that you rebuke the devourer for our sake. 
And we thank you, Father, that you will cause the windows of heaven to be opened unto us. Father, we give cheerfully and in faith because we trust you with the first fruits of our lives, Lord God. You are worthy, Lord God. And so we thank you that as we sow, thank you that you are blessing your people. Thank you that you are blessing this church. You are blessing us to do ministry debt free. In Jesus' name. So thank you, Lord, that you rebuke and devour for our sakes. Thank you that by faith, even now that the second floor uh, will be paid off and fully functional, up and operating. Uh, we give you praise and we thank you, Father, that that same grace to do debt free ministry, that you breathe it upon households. Thank you that you break the back of poverty, of lack, of not enough in our lives, Lord God, but that you come to give us life and that more abundantly. Thank you that that abundance impacts our whole life. It impacts our giving. It impacts our worship. It impacts, Lord God, our meditation. It impacts our prayer life. And so, Father, we thank you and we bless your holy name. It is in Jesus' name that we pray over these seas and let every heart say amen. And you are now in the hands of the ushers.
going ahead and clap everybody. See, they don't keep having the church. Tambourine's still going. They're still, they don't have church all day. Amen. I want to just give out these quick uh, certificates. Uh, I've been hoping these for months, and then the five star leaders are upset with me. Amen. In jest. Amen. But we have a couple that have finished five star leadership training. We have some that will be finishing, so they'll get another uh, star at the end of the completion of this term. Amen. And we have some that will be coming up. All right, that's already finished. Let's receive a brother, Andre Hodderberg. He's already finished. Amen. Amen. Even though he's an Eagles fan, we still gave him a certificate. Now, Dr. Aldridge, I believe you've already finished, but they gave you another certificate. You already have one, don't you? But they'll give you another one. Dr. Alice Aldridge, they already put your name there. I told them that you already finished. I know. It's kind of like that PhD, you went through it twice. Amen. Let's receive Dr. Alice Aldridge. She's been through it multiple times. Amen. But still, thank God. Come on up. Come on up. Yes, man. Thank you, sir. Um, his wife, uh, Brother Andre's wife, Sister Hollenberg, she's in the back serving all the people that came in today. Amen. So we have our daughter come and receive it. Come receive your mom's ability. Dr. Andre, you can get, you go down if you want, or you can take the pictures up to you. You done? <laughs> That's all right. Sing for your mom. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. The Heidelbergs. Amen. And um, now let's, we got a couple that are just coming in. Amen. Uh, Elder Larry Reese. Amen. He has a one. He's working on his second. <laughs> Sister Kelly Hunter is coming on up to receive her first shot. Sister Kelly is vibrant. She's a new addition to our leadership class. And she came in with some fire. Praise God. Amen. 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 Uh, Brother Earl McCoy has two stars. He's working on a third. Amen. Right now. Come on. Brother Michael Perry has two. He's working on a third. Come on now. What is five star leadership? It is yes, so you can learn how to lead. In the church, amen. We believe that Christians should be leading. Here you go, Brother Mike. Bless you, man. Bless you, man. Um, and we're going to be adding to that, amen. Sister Margarita Fair, amen, has three stars. We're going to a fourth star. So you'll learn how to lead. You want to help her up there with the uh, stairs, man, uh, the ladies when they come up. Brother Justin Minor has three. We're going to a fourth star. Saints. Sister Elizabeth Barnes, amen, has come on up, has a three-star working on the fourth. She did an awesome job for our Sunday school today. Awesome job. Sister Christiane Wilson is always working, amen. Is she here, Christiane? She may be outside. All right, she go to the right. Praise God. Her fiance, Mike, in the back of She's in the right. You know where she is all the time. Praise God. Awesome job. Praise dancing today. Amen. And this fire, this fireball of the Holy Ghost, we have to tell her in class, we don't want to do a bunch of assignments. Amen. My sister Elizabeth 20, amen. Coming on up with the God. Praise the Lord. She's working on her fifth star. She always wants to write papers. And uh, the saints have to tell her, hey, we ain't doing all that. Amen. Uh, Mother, uh, Mother Basile already has her five stars. She's always in the class. Like I said, Dr. Aldridge already has her five stars. Uh, Sister Gladys Moy already has her fifth star. She shows up as well. So we thank God for all of our five star leaders that are in training. Come on, let's give God praise for them. We are learning to lead God's way so that we can lead ministries. Some of the highlights we talked about now are in a book called A Leadership Goal by John Maxwell. This, this should end about maybe four to eight, four to six weeks. 
and then the next uh, session should start around May. So we'll let you know that. We want you to get into the leadership class. Uh, it, it takes a while if you start and stop. If you go through, it should take you more than a year, year and so much to get through. But can we give them another hand clap of praise? Thank you for taking one picture. Let's help the ladies down in the beginning. We have one more that's not here. We'll give his, uh, his, him, to him. When he comes back to my words up. Amen. Can we give God praise for all the souls that came from the way and joined our church? If you join today, if you gave your life to Christ today, hear Pastor and hear me well. This journey wouldn't, won't be easy. But we're here to walk alongside of you to see you get to the finish line. So this is what I need, church. And I always say this to you, but I want to say it in all sincerity. Because of the drought of fish that came in. That we must walk in love. That we must go alongside them while they're walking. This is not, I told the other church this last week when we preached in Southern Tabernacle at my friend's church. Uh, Pastor Todd, that when new people come in, they're not replacing you. They are here to help you. Because what you guys don't know, we have sons and daughters here that'll be going out to pastor soon. They'll be leaving our church to go pastor. And so that means that God is raising up other ministers and missionaries and deacons that can carry the mantle on, all right? So if, when God is adding to our church, somebody say, that's for assistance. Amen. And we give God praise for that. God is up to some things that you don't even know, but it's all a part of his plan. How many enjoyed Easter service today? What was the title of my sermon? What scripture did I come from? What was one of my points? Receive the same. What was another one? What was the third one? Suffering. Respect is? Suffering. All right. I, I was listening to you. I just didn't scream today. I gave you something that you can live off. Now, I know y'all say, see, Sister Gibson be spoiling y'all. She already have up there for you. <laughs> she be looking out for y'all. Amen. All you got to do is look, but some sons don't be looking. Amen. But we thank God for you. What an awesome time we had in Sunrise Service. Minister Charles did an amazing job. Of the Ryan Clock Pitch. Last but not least, this is not a Sunday only church. Amen. Listen to the pastor, I'll get on your phone. This is not a Sunday only church. Every second Sunday, every second Monday, we have men's and women's ministry. Every Tuesday, we have Summer Break Recovery. That starts at 6 30. That's for Hurts, hangups. You can come and get delivered for that. It's a small group setting and it's very personal, so come. Every Wednesday we have Bible study, midweek service, small group, something of that nature, and it's something for the whole family. So while the adults are over here, the children, teenagers are on the other side. Every Thursday is a choir rehearsal and or fishers of men. And then some Fridays we have service, and then on Saturdays we have things. And then, so we're open six to seven days a week. Why are you saying that? Listen to the pastor. This new year, I don't just want to see you on Sunday. I need some of y'all to press your way and come out here during the midweek. Well, pastor, you know, I got to work and I'm tired. Listen to me. I work too. I got children and stuff all the time. And I want you to be here not so that you can pay some type of homage to me. The more that you sit underneath the word, the more it will transform your life. I'm telling you, if you sit underneath the word, I'm talking about how can they hear unless they have a preacher? How can he preach unless he be? So when you sit underneath the word, and it's being declared to you. Your teenagers are getting the same thing y'all get in here. I can vouch for every youth minister in here that's preaching. They're preaching the same stuff. We have the same heart. Amen. So I want you to listen. Somebody say, press your way. Press your way. 
Press your way. Press your way. On Sunday, press your way. Press your way through the midweek. There's something here for you. Well, I'm going to hold on to my hurt and hang up. No, come on Tuesday. Let God deliver you for whatever it is, all right? All right, amen. Let's receive, uh, let's go stand to our feet and ready to go home. Do we have anything this week that we didn't remember? I think we're good, amen. And I ask that I'm, like I'm going to be looking in the crowd, but I'm really, I'm really looking for Deacon Smith to tell me if we're missing anything. Uh, we got some great news to share with you next Sunday. Phenomenal news to share with you next Sunday. So, come to hear the great and good news. This week, if you will, be praying for the church. Pray for our finances. We're not in any trouble. Just that God continue to grow them. Pray for the members that join. They're not in any trouble. Just pray that God strengthen them. And pray for the leadership. We're not in any trouble. We just need God to guide us. You don't always have to pray when something bad happens. For men ought to always pray. And not what? Amen. Let's come into agreement with God's word. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, On this wise, speaking to Aaron and the son, saying, On this wise, this is how you bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, that The Lord bless thee, the Lord keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace, and they shall put my name on the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Now may the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost, may it rest full of the bond and be with you hence now and forevermore. I speak a blessing over your life that cannot be reversed. For there's a blessing that comes only from the Lord. But I say unto one, I say unto all, watch and pray until we meet again. Have a great day, you all. Happy rest.